We're mystically opening and closing this disk drive without pressing the button using a C-sharp program. This is the program that opens and closes the uh, drive and it's just one button much like the button on the side of the computer that opens and closes the drive. The code behind it isn't uh, very long but it's kind of sophisticated and you have to understand a lot in order to really understand it. I basically need to link to other language code using what's known as the runtime uh, interop services of C sharp and I don't know how long you've been in programming but basically what we're linking to is very old code called Win API, which is used actually to interface almost any kind of device or graphics it is used a lot for graphics on the screen and whatnot but uh, there's a number of three letter acronyms you need to understand in order to really look at the code. One is DLL which stands for dynamic link. Actually it's library not language. Hmm. And the other is uh, MCI which stands for media control interface. And then API stands for application program interface. Boy I really didn't finish typing this stuff out. And of course the most important one is TLA which stands for three letter acronym. And the WIN API or Windows API interfaces uh, among other things are used to interact with device drivers like the device driver for the CD uh, drive, the tray opening and closing. And linking to the API via uh, interop services you need to have a using of system.runtime.interop services. You also have a, to have a prototype method that matches the signature of the method that's in the DLL, which is a dynamic link library. And in order to hook up with that uh, DLL, you need a DLL import attribute. This will be a lot more close, clear when we look at the actual code. And then of course you need access to the DLL file that contains the actual Win API method, the actual code. And the name of this DLL in the case of this program is WinMM.DLL for uh, multimedia. And if you look at the actual code, here's the using system.runtime.interop services. And then inside the uh, partial form one class. We have a square bracket surrounding a DL import, DLL import and then we have the name of the DLL and an entry point into the DLL which you don't really need to know about in a character set of character set dot ANSI. And these square brackets mean it's attributes for what follows. And what follows is a prototype for a method that's within this DLL. The name of the method uh, is MCI send string. MCI stands for media control interface. And then the main argument to this really is a, a pointer to a string in C++ terms. And that string is what's known as a command string. And it has different commands you can send to actually code just above the driver of the drive. And then the other parameters are a return string and a return length and a pointer to a callback routine, none of which we really use. If you look at the actual code, we're doing a MCI send string and then this is the command string which is set CD audio door open, which opens the door and then we just have a null a zero and a input pointer or int pointers dot zero which is basically saying ignore the other three attributes we're not really using them for anything and then in order to close the door we have another command string of set uh, CD audio door closed 
and in order to have just one button I use my trick of changing the text on the button so I say if the button text says eject disk then change the text to close tray so in effect we flip to the other state and then send a string that opens the door since we're ejecting the disk and then the else means it says close tray which is what we set it to here and then it uh, changes the text to eject disk and does a uh, set CD audio door close so it closes the door and changes the button to open the door the next time it's pressed well, if we compile and run this code should have done a center screen and press the eject disk I don't know if you could hear the tray opening but it did I shot a video of showing it and I've got to thank my son for uh, the cinematography of filming that in the middle of the night last night and also for the lighting of holding the flashlight so we could see it and now if I click close tray the tray closes and once again I hope you could hear it and if we press eject disk it opens again with any luck and then if I press close tray it closes again and so on you actually have to wait a bit for the disk to uh, get recognized by the system which looks at the contents and everything before you press eject disk again major tip if you're using this very useful program <laughs> Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a lot. One thing I would like to add is that the nature of DLLs actually started with an operating system called OS2 that I worked in for about six years. And then it was actually originally Microsoft OS2. And then Bill Gates sort of on the side built Windows as a way of testing the interface while the OS2 graphic interface was being developed and then he just took Windows and ran with that and basically said forget about you guys so uh, the whole concept the system architect for OS2 had was the first time a person references the DLL it gets loaded into memory and then the next time someone references it doesn't get loaded again you just increment a reference count and the second user uses the same code and then when they stop using it you decrement the reference count and when no one's using it again it gets released from memory uh, ergo the dynamic in the name it's dynamically getting loaded and unloaded as people ask for it well I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a lot and I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe